Hello everyone, welcome to the next and final chapter 2 video. Today we will be covering the last topic of this chapter, which is in section 2.7 in the textbook regarding adding and subtracting rational expressions. Here's the chapter outline one more time, and again, I recommend you do the practice questions for this section, which can be found on pages 128 to 130. So let's get started. This is the success criteria for this lesson, and like the last video on multiplying and dividing rational expressions, we want to use the principles of adding and subtracting rational numbers this time to add and subtract rational expressions and also note the restrictions throughout the calculation. The adding and subtracting processes for rationals are almost identical, and they have a couple common steps with multiplication and division. So let's get right into it. We're going to cover both adding and subtracting in the same five steps, because again, they are pretty much identical processes, and I will show you the only difference later on. So step one, just like with multiplication and division, we want to factor the numerators and denominators for all expressions. So we just want to factor in that first step. This will not only make it easier to find restrictions, but makes it very easy to do step number two, which we'll get on in a sec. So let's check out this example that I have here for you guys. We have an addition question. We have 2t all over t squared minus 1 plus t plus 2 all over t squared plus 3t minus 4, right? So all we want to do here is look at all the denominators, all the numerators, and just factor them. So first we have a 2t here. It's already factored, so it kind of stays the same. t squared minus 1, we have a difference of squares here. So we just want to factor it like we usually do. We get the square root of the first term, t squared, which is t. We get the square root of the second term, which is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. And then we just uh, put in this form of t minus 1 times t plus 1. So that takes care of the first term. Now the second term, we have t plus 2, which is already factored, so it kind of stays the same again. And we have t squared plus 3t minus 4, which is a simple trinomial. And again, we will factor it like we always do. We want to find two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to 3. And if you remember in the last theory video, I told you guys if c is negative, our numbers are going to be of opposite signs, or m and n numbers are going to be of opposite signs. And we just got to find two numbers that are of opposite signs and add to positive 3, right? And so those numbers in this case are 4 and negative 1. So those are m and n, and we put it in the form of t plus 4 times t minus 1. And there we go. We have our factored, our two factored rational expressions, which add to one another. And lastly, we just want to check for restrictions. Again, on every step, we want to do this. We have here a t minus 1. So if t were to equal 1 in this scenario, right, 1 minus 1 will give us 0, and the whole den denominator will be 0, which would give us an undefined expression. So therefore, t cannot be equal to 1. Here, if t was negative 1, then this denominator will be 0, so t cannot be equal to negative 1. Here, the same, t, if t was 1, which we already have here. And here, t plus 4, if t was negative 4, it will make this whole denominator 0 and this whole expression undefined. So therefore, t cannot be negative 4. And those are exactly the three restrictions we have up here. And we just note them down for later. Now, step 2, we need to find the lowest common denominator and rewrite each term to half this denominator, just like we do with rational numbers, right? So if we were to have two rational numbers, such as a number over two, right, times a number over three, what we would normally do, right, in this step, uh, sorry, not multiplied, adding, right, what we would normally do in this step is find the lowest common denominator between two and three, which we know is six, and so we do 2 and we multiply 3 to get 6, and to 3 we multiply 2 to get 6. But remember, everything we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator. So if we, add, if we multiply by 3 in the denominator here, we multiply by 3 in the numerator. If we multiply by 2 here in the denominator, we multiply by 2 in the numerator. And so we'll get a number times 3 over 6 plus another number times 2 over 6, and now we can simply just add the numerators, which we'll get on to in later steps, right? 
So the same way that we add rational numbers, we're going to add rational expression, right? So here we kind of want to look at what factors each term has and what is missing, right? So here, this term has a t, a t minus one as one factor and a t plus one. And this term has a t plus four as a factor in the denominator and a t minus one. And we want to get these denominators to be the same like we do with the rational numbers. So we can just simply add or subtract the numerator, right? So this term has a t plus four and this term doesn't. So what do we need to do? We need to multiply this term on the top and the bottom. Remember everything we multiply to the denominator, we multiply to the numerator. So since this term doesn't have a t plus four and this one does, we just want to multiply a t plus four on the bottom and a t plus four on the top to the first term, right? The one that doesn't have the t plus four. And this term over here does not have a t plus one like this one does. So all we want to do again is multiply a t plus one to the denominator and a t plus one to the numerator. And the t minus one is common in both terms. So we don't need to multiply anything by t minus one. And now we get left with these two even longer expressions, but are going to make it easier for us to just add the numerators and we go on. Okay. Moving on to step three, you want to now add and subtract the numerators, expand them, and then collect like terms. So the denominator stays the same. We are only changing the numerator. So again, we want to, I know it says here, expand the numerators and then add them or subtract them. But what I like to usually do, right, um, is add these two numerators, right? Just put it Okay, I'll, I'll explain the example in a sec, but what I usually like to do is say 2t, t plus 4, and then we're adding them, so we're just going to add the numerators, and we're adding it to t plus 2 and t plus 1, which is the other numerator, and the denominator, again, as it says, it's going to stay the same, or as I said, right, t plus 4, t minus 1, t plus 1, right, so we're just joining the expressions to make one big expression, right? And all we're doing is taking the first numerator plus the second numerator. And if this, this is where the only um, change happens with addition or subtraction, you can see that here it says add or subtract the numerators, is it, because if this was a negative sign right here, instead of here being a positive sign, we just switch this to a negative, right? It's very simple. We just take the numerators and put whatever sign you know, we have between the expressions between them, so we either add them or subtract them. In this case, we're going to add them. And now here is where I like to expand, right, each numerator and then collect like terms. But in this example, we're going to expand first. So I'll explain it that way. So here we have a 2t times t plus 4. So all we want to do is use the distributive property, right, and multiply that 2t by everything in the brackets. So 2t times uh, t is going to give us 2t squared, 2t times 4 is going to give us 8t, right? Mm -hmm. And now we have the other numerator, which we have t plus 2 times t plus 1, so binomial expansion. Um, we're just going to multiply everything in the first binomial, right? First, we're going to multiply the t by everything in the second binomial, and then we're going to multiply the 2 by everything in the second binomial, right? Or we can use um, the commutative property, to say that this is the same as saying t times t plus 1 plus 2 times t plus 1, right? Using this, multiplying it by the binomial plus 2 multiplying it by the binomial, right? You can think about it both ways, but here we go. We get t squared plus 3t plus 2 once we multiply everything and we collect like terms, right? And now here is where the example, we're going to join the uh, two expressions together to make one big expression. Again, there's a positive sign in between the expressions, so we're going to add the numerators. And now from here, from this step, we just want to collect like terms in the numerator. Again, the denominator staying the same, and we have no extra restrictions in this step because it's all the same restrictions, negative 4, 1, and negative 1, right? So we don't need any restrictions. So now let's just collect like terms. We have a 2t squared and a t squared, so 2 plus 1 going to give us 3t squared. We have 8t 
plus 3t, that's going to give us an 11t. And we have just a 2, so we're going to stick with that loan coefficient of 2. Right? And that's where we're at so far. We have an expanded um, polynomial in the numerator. And the denominator, it's still that factored form that we had from the free, uh, previous steps. Right? Four. After we have added the numerators and collected like terms, we want to factor the numerator once more, right? If possible. So in this case, the numerator is not factorable, but in some cases it would be. And so if this was a trinomial that you could factor, you would factor it because then in the next step, step five, we want to we want to cancel out any common factors that appear in the numerator and denominator. And sometimes when you collect like terms. Uh, you, or you, sorry, you factor the numerator, you might get um, common factors between the numerator and denominator, right? If there's a question where the numerator is factorable and you factor it, you might be able to cancel out. Maybe on top, you'll get like a t plus four. You just cancel these out and it just further simplifies your expression. So uh, those are steps that we need in the process, right? Last is step six, and we just want to again note all the restrictions we have found throughout the question and state them. So in the first step, I think we found these three uh, restrictions that t cannot be negative four, t cannot be negative one, and t cannot be one. And now at the end here, we're just putting them in a nice box, noting them, uh, and that's pretty much the end of the question. That is it for this video, and that is it for at least the theory part of chapter 2. In the next video, we will do some examples regarding addition and subtraction of rational expressions, and we can finally move on to chapter 3. So thanks uh, for watching, guys, and always remember to keep practicing.